1990, I worked on the film set for the movie Diane Young. The set was constructed adjacent to the historic Ford House within Mendocino Headland State Park in the town of Mendocino on California's north coast. For the purposes of the movie, the exterior shell of a Victorian replica was constructed on the coastal terrace overlooking the Pacific Ocean. For those who have seen the movie, this was the old house that the characters played by Julia Roberts and Campbell Scott rented in Mendocino after fleeing San Francisco. While the exterior of the house was completed by the filmmakers, the interior was left a mere shell. However, one of the rooms was finished out, and it was used for some of the interior filming. Otherwise, the house was used primarily as a backdrop for exterior filming. Because the film site was in an historic area, I was assigned to work with the film crew in order to safeguard cultural resources from any potential adverse effect. Because the Victorian's footprint overlapped an area I was concerned about, I recommended that the house be built elsewhere on the terrace. For a number of reasons, though, that wasn't possible. As a result, I required that there be no subsurface impact from the construction of the house. The film crew agreed to my request. Rather than excavate for a pier block foundation, as would have been their preferred method in a normal situation, the film crew devised an ingenious hydraulic jack system that served to keep the house jacked up without the need for a foundation. The filmmakers hired a crew of about 60 local North Coast carpenters to build the house. It was pretty amazing to stand below and watch them all scurrying about the house during its construction. There were so many hammers banging away and saws running that it sounded like someone's idea of a carpenter's chorus. Because there were so many carpenters clamoring about the house, the added weight caused it to sink down in the soft coastal terrace soil. To mitigate against the house sinking, a two-man crew was assigned to crawl under the house and operate jacks that were placed there. All during the construction, they worked the jacks. As the house settled down, they jacked it right back up again. This went on for days. I was relieved once the filming was completed and the house had not collapsed. At the time, I figured that I would catch some grief should it collapse and I was to blame. When the director arrived, he decided that he wanted an old picket fence constructed as part of the set. The art director sent some of the crew out to canvas the community in an attempt to purchase an existing fence of suitable age and appearance. Within a few hours, the crew returned with several truckloads of fencing. They had found a willing seller on a ranch just a few miles down the road. Although the rancher's fence was aged and in disrepair, it was exactly what the film crew was looking for. It's probably best if I don't tell you how much they paid the rancher for his fence. Suffice it to say, he made out like a bandit. By the way, this was the first movie I had worked on where there was an actual money man on the set. He walked around with a briefcase filled with cash, and it was his job to dole out the money as needed for any last minute or unexpected purchases, like this picket fence. This was before the days of ATM machines on every corner. The money man was the ATM. Constructing a water tower wasn't part of the original film plans. However, when the director arrived and saw the set, he decided that he also wanted a water tower just like the ones he saw beside many of the historic structures in Mendocino. He felt that the water tower was important for the film's backdrop. Of course, that made it necessary to construct one. Because the water tower was slated to be built near an area thought to be archaeologically sensitive, I cautioned against disturbing the ground. The set engineers were forced to consider their options for building a water tower without benefit of any kind of subsurface foundation. Would it be possible to construct a 30-foot tower without benefit of a foundation? Before they could devise a plan, assuming one was even possible, the set manager took me aside and explained that the water tower was going to be used in a scene with Julia Roberts. I don't know if that was true or not, but it sure got my attention. He told me that Ms. Roberts was going to be filmed standing atop the tower. And he said, we can't have her standing atop an unsafe structure, can we? It was a windy day. And the thought of the tower collapsing with Julia Roberts standing atop it was quite sobering. 
I thought about it, and then I told the set manager that his crew could go ahead and install the necessary subsurface pier foundation in order to ensure Ms. Roberts' safety. The crew was obviously relieved and quickly set about excavating the trench for the foundation. I monitored their work the best I could, retrieving the occasional artifact from the back dirt. The artifacts I found consisted of a horseshoe, several ceramic sherds, a few pieces of saw-cut bone or food scraps, quite a few glass shards, a cut nail, a couple of insulators, and two chert flakes. These artifacts, while nothing to write home about, testify to the occupation of the area by California Indians and early American settlers. Being an archaeologist, I was impressed with the artifacts, but I can't say the film crew was, other than for maybe the horseshoe. A few of them thought it was cool. I remember one of them even saying, that's cool, when I showed the old horseshoe to him. Fortunately, the excavation for the foundation resulted in minimal disturbance to the archaeological site. At my request, the crew was able and willing to keep the impact to an area that had already been disturbed, thus satisfying both of our needs. In other words, we reached a mutual compromise that protected a cultural resource, as well as one of the world's most beloved actors. Cultural resource management, like most anything else in life, is often a matter of such compromise. When the crew completed their work, the water tower was anchored to the ground and Ms. Roberts' safety was assured. Perhaps I should note that Julia Roberts is a 1986 graduate of Campbell High School in Smyrna, Georgia. That's the same school I graduated from in 1970. Giving in a little on cultural resource protection was the least I could do to help ensure the safety of a fellow Campbell Panther. When the production manager heard about my connection to Ms. Roberts, he volunteered to have me meet her. He said that he'd arranged to have me sit with her at lunch one day during the week of filming. I thought that was kind of cool, even more so than a horseshoe. Two weeks before filming was to begin, I flew to Canada in order to present a paper at the Chalkmool Conference, an archaeological meeting held annually at the University of Calgary. I was gone for a week. A few days after I returned home, I phoned the State Park Office in Mendocino to see how the film preparations were going and to ask if a date had been arranged for my lunch meeting with Ms. Roberts. To my surprise, I learned that work on the house had concluded earlier than anticipated and that the director had flown Ms. Roberts in a week earlier than planned to do her shots. She had come and gone while I was in Canada. The paper I presented in Calgary was important to me, but if I had only known, I wouldn't have made the trip. Soon after the filming was completed, the crew demolished the house. However, they left the water tower standing. I found out later that the park managers liked the water tower and had asked that it be left standing. When I heard that, I wasn't exactly thrilled that the park's historic landscape would have this brand new water tower standing right in the middle of it. I thought that was inappropriate. But on second thought, I decided that in this case, the tower would probably be considered an important cultural resource someday given that Julia Roberts had once stood atop it. As a result, I didn't push for its removal. The tower stood there for a few years, but it appears to be gone now. I have no idea if it eventually collapsed in the wind, or perhaps was taken down or moved elsewhere in order to protect the park's historic landscape. I enjoyed working on Diane Young. In the end, the park's resources were well protected, as was the safety of Ms. Roberts. Working on this film was a positive experience for me. The film crew was extremely professional and they seemed to be genuinely interested in helping protect the park's natural and cultural resources. Fortunately, that was almost always the case in the films I worked on. Diane Young was directed by Joel Schumacher, produced by Sally Field, and starred Julia Roberts and Campbell Scott. The film was released by 20th Century Fox in 1991. I failed to see Diane Young when it was being shown in theaters, but I did buy a copy of the film on VHS a few years later. I really wanted to see the house and the water tower I helped build. I realized that Julia Roberts and Campbell Scott are great actors, but it was the house and tower that were the real stars for me. I look forward to seeing them. Funny thing though, as I watched the film, I failed to see Julia Roberts atop the water tower. She did have a scene where she stood on an upstairs deck of the house, but never the water tower. I suppose the director had second thoughts about having her climb atop the tower. 
that's probably just as well, given how windy it can be on the Mendocino coast. And in hindsight, the foundation we built for the water tower probably wasn't that substantial. A few years ago, shortly before I retired, I was looking through some of the collections stored in my office, and I found a small paper bag marked Diane Young, 1990. The bag contained the artifacts recovered from the trench that was excavated for the water tower's foundation. I looked inside and saw the old horseshoe and thought to myself, that's cool. My mind then filled with distant memories and I smiled. Working on Diane Young is just one of the many wonderful and rewarding experiences I cherish from my many years as a public servant.